it's the most exceptional year of our life. A seismic day in English football. A clear wow. hole. As the championship race hits for the final furlong, there's another night of high drama at Anfield. I always think there's pivotal points that could change your season around. Ferdinand turns and scores! Coming together midweek at Anfield was always going to be a special day. There was an electricity about it, Anfield was crackling. It's deafening at Anfield, even by the standards set here on Merseyside. Newcastle were the great entertainers. They had so many amazing footballers. It just felt from the first minute that this game was going to be special. Going to Newcastle, I knew Keegan had set the team up to create chances and he said to me, I think you're one of the best headers of ball in the country and I'm giving you wingers to provide that service for you. I didn't sign Newcastle for the sunshine. I signed for Newcastle to be as good as possible on the football pitch. Kevin Keegan was saying, I bought someone here who's going to supply. He came in, I remember he had the model wife and he had the model looks. And then he got onto the pitch and then I realised his ability to play football was, you know, was top of the tree. That's great play and the control for Ginola. Set a wonderful quality. Ginola. Brilliant goal! Obviously it was a culture shock in many ways. But I soon realised that football belongs to England. The fans, they are very devoted to the club. Your duty as a player is not only to win games, but to entertain those guys. From a centre-forward's point of view, it was everything I could have dreamed of and more. It was like going into the sweet shop. Great cross, you know, Ferdinand's in there, oh yes! It only took a touch! At the time, I think uh, Newcastle were every, everybody's second favourite team. The way we play football, the way we entertain, the way we, uh, we score goals, we play for fun. Playing at St James Park was a pure joy every time. You know, when I was living up in Newcastle, I had to come back to London for a few days. And everybody I saw along the way would say to me, I'm not a Newcastle supporter, but any time they're on the TV, I'll watch them. No stopping him. He keeps going. And that is class from Les Ferdinand. I always used to feel sorry for our defenders. We were so attack-minded, we'd leave them to it at times. We were playing every single game the same way. We try to score more goals than the opponents. You score one, we'll score two. You score two, we'll score three. And as great as that sounds, it doesn't always work out that way. We were very strong. Very, very strong. Start of January, we were 10 points clear. Uh, in fact, we got to 12 points clear. And I think at the time, I always say it, there was a sense of I think we've done it. And so when we lost, it wasn't a sense of, oh damn, we've lost three points, we've got to make sure this doesn't happen again. And it comes for Cantona! Manchester United have struck. lost 15 points in in a few games and that's too much well 
it's a huge victory for Manchester United. Newcastle still have a game in hand, but the gap is cut to just one point. Those points were all gone. Two of the best supported teams in this country coming together midweek at Anfield was always going to be a special game. We played them a couple of times that season. We knew what they were capable of. We were third in the table at the time, so we still felt we were in this title race. We were quite an open team ourselves. We knew we could cause any team problems. The speech from Keegan before the game was very simple. It didn't emphasize too much about the defending uh, aspect of the game. And this is why we, uh, uh, we've been struggling a little bit. And they score! We've just been beaten by Arsenal a few days before. What a start! We got done by an early goal. And such is the effect on their goal difference that they forfeit top spot in the Premiership to Manchester United. And that became a theme for us, being sort of like giving early goals away. And one thing we do, we went to Anfield and we was like, let's keep a clean sheet, get the crowd against them, because if we can do that, if we can keep it quiet, they'll get a bit anxious, the crowd will get a bit anxious, the players will get a bit nervous. And so that was the, that was the game plan. Keep them quiet, keep them quiet. Now Collymore. The Bills will swing back his cross, and it's a goal! Robbie Fowler! What a start for Liverpool! Game plan's gone out the window. The goal in the second minute. I remember going back to take the kickoff and saying, well, we've got no choice, we've just got to go and attack. Tino, Peter, Beardsley, myself, we were just like very quick, very fast going forward because we wanted the ball in the box for Les. Les at that time was one of the best centre forwards in the world. Les was a joy to play with. It's easy to play when you have a, a striker like that with you. Well, the two big hitters, if you like, have landed major blows inside the opening ten minutes. David Ginola was certainly a player that we knew if we could stop him, there might be some success for us to be had. You know, I was telling John Beresford, give me the ball. But you have a defender behind you now, just give me the ball, forget about the rest, I do the rest. Ginola was a genius. Great looking guy, he had everything. And at that time, you're thinking, right, we've got to hang on here because this is an incredible side. We've got to make sure they don't go 3-1 up and then all of a sudden the game's gone away from you. It's just amazing how many chances there were in the game. You know? I mean, it was just it's like a basketball match. It's read that shot! It was so open, the game. We just had to make sure that we got the next goal. We turned it around very, very quickly, but we were still giving them opportunities. Now there is the half-time whistle, and it's been a breathtaking first 45 minutes. We didn't say, wow, we're up in the game, I don't feel, it's amazing. No, it was just, OK, let's have some more fun. We were feeling so confident that uh, we knew that we could score goals. We'll see how Newcastle can defend here. But we forgot about, uh, you know, sometimes you concede goals you don't want to. In second, Newcastle ripped apart. It just felt from that moment it was game on. It's deafening at Anfield, even by the standards set here on Merseyside. That's a terrific play from Beard. 
Barnsley. Newcastle respond the only way they know how. With brilliant attacking play of their own, Aspria! And that was what Newcastle could do to you. They had so many good players. Newcastle lead again. Shall we go 3-2 up and we're thinking, right, just hold on now, just hold on now, just hold on. McIntyre. That's a wicked ball. Um, but it wasn't to be. Our fans were demanding us to get forward and try to get a winner. No one was hanging on for a point. Here's Ferdinand, one on one with Harkness. Les Ferdinand is in for Newcastle. And then I get a great chance up the other end where I turn. And I thought, this is it, they're going to score. Hit my left foot and um, David James comes out and makes it. A brilliant save, managed to smother it, kept us in the game. I'd have to say, world-class save, to be honest, Jamie. Um, <laughs> Have you ever known 90 minutes go so quickly? Barnes, rush, Barnes. Still John Barnes, Collymore closing in! It's not often you go away and feel, especially at that stage, and, and score three goals and, and still come away not having won the game. At the end of the day, that, that was us, that was Newcastle, that's how we played football. Newcastle, in disbelief. It's Liverpool's night in the end. And a jarring blow to the ambitions of Newcastle. They played like champions. They were a joy, they were a credit to the Premier League. You, know, you can't always win titles, you can't always be the best team, but I'll tell you what they did, they entertained so many people. The entertainers is, uh, that's what they call us, but entertainers without winning things doesn't mean a thing for us. If we'd have won that, I think we'd have gone on to win the league. How, how did it happen? How did it happen? Not only was it a brilliant football match, it was played in you know, great spirit, it had drama, it had absolutely everything, and that's what the Premier League is all about. Games in the Premier League are just amazing for that as well, because when you think things are all over, great for the league, but not great for us. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.